Today is Melbourne's uh, hottest day on record since me being back. I've been back for, I think, exactly a month so far. So I'm going to go for a ride to my grandparents' house. They don't live too far away, and I've got this brand new bike behind me that my grandpa gave to me. So I figured I might as well, because today is a Sunday. I don't have anything particularly exciting on. Uh, so I thought, you know what? Let's shoot a vlog, and um, I really hope that my uh, gimbal is good because obviously I have a new phone, and I I cannot drop this at all. So I've got to be very very careful. I love this bike so much. It's so smooth and nice. And this is the trail where we start to go on to my grandparents' place. But there is one thing I want to show you really quick. It's like Australia doesn't have a huge homeless problem, but uh, there are a couple of homeless people over here in these enormous tents pitched up. But anyway, back on the main path down here, and we'll go up over the bridge. It feels very cool doing this uh, bike path again because aside from the city bikes in New York, I don't really ride any normal bikes. And the bikes in New York are all, they're just heavy and clunky. You can't really ride super fast on them, which makes sense. Also as well, that car dealership over there, public car sale, a few months ago, there was a huge car accident where a car flew right through the front of the shop and we arrived at the scene and drove past it like five minutes after it happened. ...has cleaned up another vehicle, smashing it through a used car dealership in Dandenong. Both flipped, creating an expensive domino effect inside the showroom. Penelope Leish with our exclusive report. A white Toyota flies through a corner, ploughing into a black station wagon and slamming it through a Dandenong car dealership. I'm pretty impressed at my ability to ride a bike and vlog at the same time. This is not a GoPro. Right over here, look at these horses. This place is called Myuna Farm. Amazing, amazing. Three different colored horses right there. Wow. And I've got to try and stay off the main road as much as possible because it's technically illegal in Victoria to ride a bike without a helmet, which I think is dumb. Motorcycles, I get though. Following along this, the Dandenong Creek Trail and uh, yeah, gosh, it is so hot today. Wow, it's been nothing but raining for the last three weeks. Really cold, crappy weather. Um, but this, this is good old, <clears throat> the ozone layer's fucked and it's really hot kind of weather. Even though I've done this ride many times before, but haven't for a while, it feels new just because of how overgrown it is. I'm so surprised. Normally like the councils and stuff in cities around Australia are pretty good with their parks and stuff. But I mean, look at this. Like, this is usually like lawn mode, like your, like your nature strip in front of your house. It's weird. It's officially summer here. It's my first summer that I've had in Australia in four years. Um, in fact, there was a period of time where I missed out on two summers entirely because I did winter in 2019 in New York, then COVID happened in March, went to Australia. So I missed Northern Hemisphere summer and then had Southern Hemisphere winter. And then I left back for New York in September of 2020, so I did another winter. So I didn't have a summer for like nearly two years, which is just crazy. This part's one of my favorite bits. I'm just worried a snake's gonna come out. Like, 
there is there could 100% be snakes. Anyway, just gotta make sure there's no one down there. We can roll for it. <laughs> Bloody kids graffitiing the only picnic table in the area. And then we have the creek again. Gosh. When you think about the old days of Ned Kelly, the famous outlaw in Australia, in the 1800s with his big metal suit, this is what they would have seen. Just like this. Even though it wasn't in this area, he and his gang, he was sort of out more towards the, uh, the high country in Victoria, so like East Victoria and the Gippsland region. Now there's an underpass coming up and I swear in the years I've done this bike ride, every single time I think there's no one down here and I could just zoom down, there just happens to be one random person and I almost hit them every time. Let's see, let's see. And we're in the clear, but they could come zooming down this corner. Let's see, let's see. Aha, for the vlog. All right, we're super close by, but I wanted to show something. This is really surreal for me because I went to a primary school or elementary school um, in the area and we used to do our cross country running here. So part of the run would be along there and then all the way around and then past me and then down and there's like a whole bunch of other track. And I remember as a kid, some motherfuckers would run from there and skip across the grass and then onto the track again and the teachers would scream at them. And I was like, these cheaters, these cheaters. Flooding is a serious problem in Australia. So this entire back paddock, whenever it gets too much rain, the water that's sort of in that area there, it will fill all the way up past me and reach the border of people's houses along there. It is absolutely insane when that happens, but obviously in the summer, Australia has a serious drought problem. So it's always, it's always a flood in the winter and then a drought in the summer. That's how extreme Australia's weather can get. I specifically came to this spot, this spot to go on to this little jetty that I've been going to since I was a kid and occasionally fell in this dirty ass water and it says bridge closed. Yeah, no shit, the bridge is closed. Well, apparently it's getting renewed, so that's cool. But um, what I was saying before, even though Australia does have extreme sort of uh, weather and temperature, we don't get earthquakes really, because there's no fault line over Australia. We don't have volcanoes, we don't get tornadoes. There's a lot of a lot of those big things that we don't get, but we do get hurricanes and all that sort of stuff. And we've made it! <laughs> Nanny, how are you? Ooh, it's, uh, I don't know if that'll fit through there or not. We can come around the front. Okay, can you hold my camera for me? Yep. yep. It's, it's pointing your head, so you want to oh. point it the other way? <laughs> Did you have a headwind or a no. headwind? Or... Headwind. <laughs> yeah, it was headwind. It was bad. It was very, very windy. Oh, I don't know, it took about half an hour, maybe, maybe less. This is, this is Grandma, also known as Nanny. And this is Nanny's beautiful garden. Nanny tends to this garden on a very regular basis. Beautiful. So I'm just sitting down with Nanny now, just chatting. Um, and I'm very, very, very happy these last few days because one, three of our films are with Kunsthaus that we've, no, like we've put into multiple festivals. Three of our films are won awards at the same festival in Canada called the Canada Shorts Festival, um, which is which I'm so, so happy about. So congrats to the team. I wanted to put this officially on YouTube. All right, we don't have any beer, but Nanny's gotten us some salsa and chips and a nice Diet Coke. And Nanny just recently turned 32 years old, didn't you? <laughs> I wish. I'm gonna cheers, Nanny. So how am I gonna get to see your movie? I wanna see at least one of them. Oh, you wanna see 
last meal or fish king or which ever. One, they're all good, but which ones stand out? Um, I mean, I like them all, but I'm biased, but I'll show you some. So why did I decide to leave business school? This feels a little bit weird to talk about because it's kind of like something that's kind of like off my mind for the most part, I guess. But I feel like it's something that's important to talk about for the thesis of the channel. So I started business school in 2017, right out of high school, and I did that for a full year. And then at the end of 2017 is when I found out I got into the Atlantic Acting School in New York. I deferred for a year for Atlantic, knowing I needed to save up money. And I did business school in 2018, kind of on and off because I was working so much. And then after a while, I, I guess I just realized that even though it is kind of scary not having like a full degree in my pocket, I figured, especially after being in the United States, that I was learning more about business and building my career more simply by being involved in business, being involved in two startup companies, being involved in all these other places. Um, I was learning more about the real world of business by doing business than I was in school. And I always felt like that school was sort of holding me down as opposed to raising me up to a better level. And, and I hope that it's the right decision I've made not to do it and, you know, continue with my producing and acting and, and doing YouTube and all that sort of stuff. Because it makes me feel more alive. Being in school, I feel kind of like, like sort of dumped on. It's just kind of like the same information just being thrown on top of you over and over and over again. And it's not, it's not like real world experience. Nothing can prepare you for what's actually out there. And everything that's, that I've done in my life has been trial and error. Everything's trial and error. And business has been helpful in terms of schooling in some ways, but for the most part, I honestly wasn't really learning that much, truly not learning that much. Um, but yeah, no, I figured I want to talk about this. This is obviously like a very personal subject, but, um, but yeah, that's sort of like my philosophy on it. I remember going to high school, uh, in 2018, like I came back to the school and did like a speech, um, like o over a year after I graduated. And I did this speech essentially saying after I had done a visit to the US, this was before I had moved there. And I said to the students in front of everybody, which I don't think the teachers and the principals liked very much. I said that whatever score you get at the end of high school does not determine what you are capable of doing for the rest of your life. Because for me, I worked way too hard in high school. I stressed out so badly to the point where I had a massive mental breakdown in my final year of high school. And it was just all of that pressure, at least in the state of Victoria, just this huge pressure to get a fantastic final score. Otherwise you can't do anything with your life. You'll basically be homeless and this and that. And I told the school that like a lot of the opportunities I'd had had been just because of my own making and who I am and the people that I've met and gone and done, that has been a result of the person I've become. That was even before I moved to the US. And a lot of people didn't like me for that speech, particularly the teachers. I remember the principal of the school didn't even talk to me after I did this speech. And I became very embarrassed by it for a while. And then on the train from work, like about a week and a half ago, I had a guy that I didn't remember, I was honest, he was in the year level above my sister and I was sitting on the train and he like looked over towards me. I didn't recognize him. And he said, Pandasopolis. And I said, yeah, sorry, do I know you? And he goes, oh, my name's Mehdi. And I went to, uh, I went to Casey Grammar with you. I'm like, oh, okay, dude, that's awesome. Um, and he goes, dude, I just like, I just wanted to let you know that I remember back in 2018 when you came to the school and you did that speech, I was at the beginning of year 12 and that speech was, was the thing that I needed. Like that is the thing that I needed and so many people respect you for having the balls to come into the school and do that. And it just, it felt amazing to have this person that I didn't remember, remember me for a speech that I had made over four years ago that I had been embarrassed about because I wasn't even sure what I was saying was correct. I definitely would have worded it a bit differently if I was to do it again. Um, but my feeling about it still remains the same. And that felt really nice to have that guy say that and that it meant something to him.
and he decided that he didn't want to get the final score, like he didn't do the final exams, and he's now working at one of the best law firms in Melbourne. And I'm like, that is exactly what I'm talking about. That is exactly what I'm talking about. It's not about your score. It's not about, um, you know, acing all your grades. It's about your mindset and thinking what you want to do and going for it and taking it and doing what is the most true thing to you. Again, I can, I hope I can follow my own advice on this, but, but yeah, that's basically it. Because, um, it's still a bit warmish. Nanny got another wine bottle. We're getting, we're, we're getting pissed, aren't we, <laughs> Nanny? It's so windy today. Why is it so windy? Do you want some more ice in it to cool Yes, down? please. That'd be good. Thank you. That really something I like to Look do. at that. Fancy Australian wine. <laughs> Product placement right there. What's the brand? Mike Press Sablon Blanc to 2021. All right, Adelaide Hills. unofficial sponsor. Adelaide Hills. Mike Press, Mike Press, Adelaide Hills. A single vineyard. Does that mean there's only one vineyard? Who <laughs> knows? <laughs> We're a few wines in now. Nanny, what are you getting the boys for Christmas? Not telling. It's gonna be socks. <laughs> socks and jocks. <laughs> Underwear. Socks and jocks. <laughs> You're gonna get us a. What I bought them last year, Ben and Mitch, they were quite happy with what they got. Oh, really? What did they get? A Bunnings voucher? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Home Depot. <laughs> I bought presents for everybody. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'll. I should probably pitch in a little bit this year, but you know. You know, broke and all that. <laughs> oh! Ah, oh, feels so good to relax. Oh my gosh. Oh. oh, I've needed this. I've needed this, this nice little bench deck with this view behind me and what in front of me. Um, yeah, but that's 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 the vlog for today. That's the vlog. Didn't end up going four wheel driving with my cousin because um, he booked concert tickets instead. Benny boy, if you're watching this, shame on you. Shame on you. Um, but yeah, I thought might as well. You met my nanny. We had some wine. I've had a few drinks now. So I'm going to have to uh, ride back a little bit woozy. A little bit woozy. At least it's just a bicycle. So anyway, there are things coming up soon. I will have a camera very shortly. Chris, I will subscribe to your Substack. I know Chris is watching this. Chris is a good mate of mine. I will subscribe to your Substack. I love you all. Mwah. Please leave a like. Please subscribe. Nanny, you want to say something final for the for the video? Hi. <laughs>